For the first time since her attack last September, Airdrie Matna from Adelaide has returned to South Korea, where she was drugged, abducted, raped and robbed. How are you tonight being back here for the first time? Um, uneasy, very, very uneasy. Yeah, the lights, the people, I guess it just, all it does is bring back bad memories. When police closed Airdrie's file, despite a mountain of evidence, she decided to fund her own investigation. The international outcry forced officers to reopen the case. And within weeks, they made an arrest. A Nigerian man whose DNA was a match. But this 25-year-old's brave stance earned her many enemies, including, it seems, the Korean police. Most of the hate mail, unfortunately, came after the police decided to make a public Facebook post with details about my case. So the police posted information about your case, mm. private details about your case, on their public Facebook, Facebook page. page. That's right. Why would they do that? I believe they did it to save face, to humiliate me in the eyes of the Korean public, to discredit me and to scare me off, to try to get rid of me. Did it work? No, no, it didn't. Instead, scores of victims contacted Airdrie to share their stories and offer support. And that's when I really understood how big the problem is here. It's, it's an epidemic. One of those women was fellow Australian Catherine Fisher, who was raped in neighbouring Japan in 2002. Sadly, we are guilty until we can prove ourselves innocent, which just really doesn't make sense. That's not the way it should be. Catherine's treatment at the hands of Japanese police left her more traumatised than the rape itself. Before detectives let her see a doctor or even wash, they took her back to the scene and made her reenact the assault. Something she says still happens today. They still have to do the reenactment photographs um, where the rape victim has to get into the same positions where he or she is raped. I still have nightmares about that. You, I mean, that's not something that you can wipe from your memory. Catherine's rapist, Bloke Deans, was a US Navy sailor who was allowed to leave Japan and never face charges. She's been doggedly fighting for victims' rights ever since. But 14 years on, she says nothing has changed. Japan and South Korea, they're not backward countries. No, but when it comes to women and rape crimes, it is. I mean, huge numbers of Australians visit here every single year. They need to be made aware that if they become a rape victim in this country, then they will be treated the same way that I was. And that was? Um, without any compassion, empathy, dignity. Like Catherine, Airdrie is reclaiming her dignity. While Korean police refused our request for an interview, Today, they've agreed to meet Airdrie and her mum, Heather. It's a heated discussion that lasts three hours. And when they emerge, it's clear it didn't go well. They just didn't get it and they wouldn't take responsibility for anything. You've had a pretty rough day today, haven't you? Yes, it's been horrific. Um, but it's something I felt I needed to do. What were you hoping for today? I guess, naively, I was hoping for an apology. Um, and they refused to give one whatsoever. Airdrie has since learned that her alleged attacker was not charged with rape, but sexual harassment, because she was unconscious at the time. Still, an arrest is something American Amanda Wilson is unlikely to ever see. Some days it's just the worst thing. Because even though you get away, you, um, you have to live with it. 
You have to live with, with what had happened or what he, what he did. In the letter James Hillier wrote to Amanda, he offered her $50,000 to drop the case after she was found naked, impaled on his front fence. But the Korean prosecutor refused to take on Amanda's case, citing a lack of DNA evidence. And Hillier returned to his home in California, where we track him yeah, down. Alison Langdon from uh, 60 Minutes Australia. Did you rape Amanda Wilson? No, ma'am, I did not. Then why did she bite you on the face and run naked from your apartment? I have no idea. I don't remember what happened tonight. You don't remember what happened? No, ma'am, I do not. How can you be so sure if you don't remember the night? I know me, ma'am. I know my character. I know who I am. And it just, there's just no way I could do something like that. But if you didn't and, rape uh, her, why did you offer her $50,000? Shouldn't you guys have permission to be approaching me like this? Well, I'm just asking you a few questions. Why did you offer uh, her $50,000? Why gonna, did you write her this letter apologizing for the pain and gonna, suffering? I'm not going to answer any more questions unless I have a, a lawyer present or something. I've already been through all this. With she the, was left uh, impaled on your police. fence screaming for help. Why didn't you call an ambulance? Ma'am, I'm not answering any more questions. This is, uh, this is wrong what you guys are doing. Well, hang on, this is the letter that you wrote to Amanda. Ma'am, I've Offering already, us... I've already, this has already been settled. It Korea. hasn't been settled. Yes, it has. It been. hasn't been settled. Oh, I'm sorry, you guys need to go away. Hello. Hi. <laughs> so nice Hi. to Hi. finally meet you. Back in Seoul, three women who should never have met are brought together by a shared trauma. Are you OK? Yeah. Determined to provoke change. Finally, three of us are coming together. And I wish that I was the last victim on Earth, actually. And so it's really a sad moment for me to be meeting you both today. But we are stronger together. And I'm together with you in this fight. For Airdrie Matner, giving up was never an option. While she won't rest until all three of her attackers are brought to justice, most of all, she hopes her story will save other women from suffering as she has. Do you feel brave? I... I don't. I don't really feel brave. I feel scared. I feel sick. I feel angry. Um, but I guess I'm, I'm doing it anyway. You just gave me the definition of brave. 